The topic of today's event is uh, a very unsavory one. It's the topic of female genital mutilation, which is alive and well in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I have introduced House Bill 135, which criminalizes female genital mutilation on the state level in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I have some remarks that uh, I'm going to make that uh, illustrates uh, the issue and the challenges. And what we're hoping to accomplish is to uh, certainly uh, educate my, my colleagues in the entire legislature uh, relative to this crime, this violent crime, this barbaric crime against women in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. At the present time, one of the most violent threats to women in America is from a practice known as female genital mutilation. As our nation has become a destination for immigrants from parts of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, some of these immigrants, not all of them, bring with them this violent practice against women. The number of young women in the United States at risk of being victimized by female genital, genital mutilation has sharply increased. Many of the females who have been victimized by female genital mutilation live in our Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And we badly need better state laws to protect them. This is especially true in the metropolitan Philadelphia area, an area which I represent. Female genital mutilation is usually performed at home by family members or other non-practitioners who use unsanitary and unsafe methods and implements, including shards of glass, scissors, and sharpened seashells to perform the cutting. It's reported that the procedure is typically performed on a kitchen or a coffee table with absolutely no anesthesia. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 140 million women and children worldwide have been affected by female genital mutilation. This includes 228,000 females in the United States. Female genital mutilation is most prevalent amongst girls between infancy and 15 years of age. Female genital mutilation is a ghastly practice that involves the partial or total removal of the external female genitalia for non-medical reasons. Female genital mutilation is recognized internationally as a violation of human rights of girls and women. It reflects deep-rooted inequality between the sexes and constitutes an extreme form of discrimination against women. It is almost always carried out on minors and is a violation of the rights of children. The practice also violates a female's right to health, security, and physical integrity. The right to be free from torture and cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment, and the right to life when the procedure results in the death of a female. Female genital mutilation has no health benefits and it harms girls and women in many ways. It involves the removing of healthy and normal female genital tissue and interferes with the natural functions of the human body. Immediate complications can include severe pain, shock, hemorrhaging, infertility, cysts, and increase the risk of newborn deaths and complications and bacterial infections. In 2008, the World Health Assembly passed a resolution on the elimination of this practice, emphasizing the need for concerted action from healthcare providers and law enforcement to stop this practice. This is why it's so important that we pass House Bill 135. My legislation would specifically make it a crime to cut or allow someone to circumcise or excise the genitals of a female minor. The United States Department of State considers female genital mutilation not only a public health concern, but a human rights issue as the practice violates the rights, the right of a women's bodily integrity. Women who are immigrants are at continued risk of this practice as many of their cultural beliefs follow them to the United States where the practice has moved underground. And Pennsylvania is among the states with the highest number of women who have been victimized or are at risk. Other states include California, New York, New Jersey, and Maryland. Under my bill, female genital, genital mutilation would be a felony of the first degree. Despite the health risks, many young women from parts of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia are subjected to this excruciating and life-threatening crime. There have been incidents of female genital mutilation that led to girls' deaths 
demonstrating the dangerous and horrific nature of the procedure. Women also suffer emotional and psychological trauma after female genital mutilation. All of these heinous injuries are unnecessary and can be avoided if we address the problem through proper legislation. There are many reasons given for the practice of female genital mutilation, but none based on any sound medical rationale. In some countries, female genital mutilation is a rite of passage, which marks a girl's transition to womanhood and her readiness to marry. It's also motivated by beliefs about sexuality, virginity, and chastity. Some cultures believe female genital mutilation emphasizes pureness in young girls. There is no scriptural or religious justification for female genital mutilation. In order to, co to combat this growing threat of female genital mutilation against women in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, my legislation prohibits and criminalizes this act. Shockingly, there is no current state statute in Pennsylvania that outlaws female genital mutilation, even though an estimated 10 to 25,000 Pennsylvania women and girls are at risk. The practice is a clear violation of the human rights of females. And as I mentioned, the World Health Organization classifies this as torture. Female genital mutilation manifests the worst type of marginalization of females in our society and exposes how the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the global community have fallen short in trying to protect females from this degradation, brutality, and cruelty. My bill aims to prevent the act of female mutilation and ensures that custom or consent cannot be a valid defense for female genital mutilation. If this bill is signed into law, Pennsylvania would join 23 other states in protecting the rights of young women and girls by prohibiting this procedure. Uh, we have a couple of speakers, and uh, I want to introduce and thank my colleague Jordan Harris from Philadelphia for being here. And uh, Jordan, would you like to speak? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm State Representative Jordan Harris, representing the 186th Legislative District. Um, I stand with my colleague Tom Mert uh, this afternoon uh, against the cruelty that is female mutila genital mutilation. Uh, it is an archaic and barbaric practice that needs to be removed from our communities at once. Uh, Pennsylvania is definitely far behind other states in addressing this issue. At no point in time, no point in time, should a young woman be susceptible to such torture, susceptible to such violence, and definitely not at the hands by someone who is supposed to love them. It is high time Pennsylvania moves in the right direction and passes this legislation to protect the tens of thousands of young females um, that unfortunately, right now, don't have that protection. So I stand with Representative uh, Mert uh, in support. Uh, moving this bill forward uh, so we can debate it on the floor of the House and protect young women all across the Commonwealth. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you Representative. Our, our next speaker is uh, an intern from Lafayette College, Lafayette University in Easton, uh, Danielle Moore. Danielle has uh, done a great deal of research on female genital mutilation, and she has assisted me uh, a great deal on the legislative side of bringing our bill uh, to this point, and I'm very grateful uh, to Danielle. I'm going to let her speak at this time. Danielle. Good afternoon, and thank you for your time. I first learned about female genital mutilation when I spent my semester last spring in Washington, D.C. I thought this practice was something that happened halfway across the world and that I would never come across it in my life in suburban Pennsylvania. I came home that summer to Horsham and I found out that Representative Tom Mert was working on a bill to criminalize female genitalia mutilation in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and that there are about 19,000 girls and women in the Commonwealth alone who are either undergone or are at risk for uh, female genitalia mutilation. In January 2015, House Bill 135 was brought to the Judiciary Committee to criminalize female genitalia mutilation. It is now April 2016 and the bill is not moved. Female genitalia mutilation is a practice that 19,000 girls and women in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have either undergone or are at risk of undergoing in their lifetime. It is a practice that historically has been equated with a rite of passage to womanhood. 
but there are no health benefits and many risks. Both the U.S. State, State Department and the international community has called female genitalia mutilation a human rights abuse, and many countries in Africa have begun passing legislation to ban it, most recently Gambia and Nigeria. Immigrants are one of the most marginalized communities in this country, and House Bill 135 will help immigrant women gain protection and agency under the law that they deserve. The Judiciary Committee claims that House Bill 135 is irrelevant because female genitalia mutilation can be put under the umbrella of aggravated assault, but aggravated assault counts if the action is under malicious intent, which is not female genitalia mutilation. This is a cultural and sometimes religious practice. If Pennsylvania wants to be a leader in progressing equal rights, House Bill 135 will be passed into law, and the voices of women who are typically pushed to the side will finally be heard and protected under the law. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the uh, representatives from Zonta International that are here today, and uh, Karen Shirey from Zonta is going to uh, give some remarks. Karen. Thank you, Representative Merck. We're very happy to be here. Zonta is an international organization. Uh, we're in 67 countries. We have 30,000 members. Here in Harrisburg, we have 22 members. We wear a sign that says, Zonta says no, because we oppose any practices that violate a woman's rights. And Zonta was actually a leader in FGM practices. Uh, our international service project from 1998 to 2002 focused on female genital mutilation in Burkina Faso, which is a very small country in Africa. That was kind of the impetus that got the United Nations then involved in opposing this heinous practice. So we are very appreciative of what Senator Mert is doing. Thank him for what he's done and encourage all of you to support his bill. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, and thank you to the members of Zonta <clears throat> International. I also wanted to thank uh, the representatives that are here today from the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape, who uh, are a partner in this effort, and I wanted to thank them uh, for being here today. Uh, before I uh, take any questions, if anybody has any, uh, I want to mention two things. <clears throat> Danielle mentioned that there is a mistaken belief that aggravated assault is a statute that can be used to prosecute female genital mutilation in Pennsylvania. And this has been suggested to us from the judiciary. And uh, this is not accurate on two accounts. Number one, aggravated assault requires a malicious intent or a intentional uh, effort to cause bodily harm. That condition does not exist with female genital mutilation. And the second item relative to aggravated assault is that aggravated assault actually allows a defense of consent. So if a young woman was coerced or convinced to undergo this mutilation procedure, the perpetrator could actually claim consent as a defense. And this is why the law must be changed. And uh, some of you know that I served in Iraq. And when I was serving in Iraq in 2003 and 4, we actually encountered a case of a uh, young girl who had been mutilated. And we promptly took her to the troop medical clinic so uh, she could be attended to properly and in a sanitary fashion. And uh, in addition to that, we have been given some anecdotal data that tells us that some of these, what I will call botched cases, have ended up in different emergency rooms in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where a young girl is subjected to this procedure, and uh, they cannot get the young girl to stop bleeding uh, after she has been cut, and the family or the caregivers, whoever they are, take the young girl to the uh, local emergency room 
usually in the, one of the Pennsylvania's metropolitan areas. So this is a practice that sadly and tragically is alive and well in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and is actually on the rise. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Well, <coughs> that will conclude our event. I want to thank our speakers for being here and my colleague, Representative Jordan Harris. And uh, I want to thank Zonta and the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape for their ongoing support. We are hopeful that this bill will move one way or the other through the House of Representatives. We have not ruled out a discharge resolution where it's taken from the Judiciary Committee and brought directly to the floor for a vote. Um, so that is still uh, an option for us. So thank you very much for your uh, concern. Thank you for your support.